For many of us Tesla bulls, we've known for a while now that at some point, a lot of things at Tesla will start to make a difference. Well, that time is now. It seems almost everything Tesla's working on is about to scale at the same time. While we've been in between two growth waves for auto, this second, even larger growth wave is now near. Cybertruck is now ready to scale. Tesla Semi is now ready to scale. The long-awaited revolutionary 4680 battery is about to scale. AI Compute is ahead of schedule, Optimus is nearing design complete, and Robotaxi is literally just around the corner. Today we have Tesla Uber Bull Warren Redlick joining us. Warren is a longtime Tesla investor, well known in the community. He has a YouTube channel called Warren Redlick and is one of the few people that Elon Musk himself follows on X. Welcome, Warren. Thank you for joining me. Follow me on X. Yeah. Um, you left out one Mega Pack. Mega Pack is ramping. Energy. <laughs> There's just the list is too long. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, so the reason that's one of the biggest things from the earnings call. Absolutely. 30% gross margin. The reason I wanted to catch up with you today is because you have a uh, model that you've created a while back and you've been following it for the battery model. You have a robo taxi model. You have an energy model. And every one of these things for the last year, every time I catch up with you, it's here's what's going to happen. But, you know, things haven't really started happening. Well, now they are. So I wanted to just ask right off the bat, uh, how is the progress of Tesla today comparing to your forecast? Sure. So let's start with the battery revenue model. So for people who aren't familiar, we talked about uh, Tesla has talked about we're going to go to this many terawatt hours. You know, we currently we're doing gigawatt hours of products. We're going to go to terawatt hours of products. And at the time I came up with the battery revenue model, most Tesla products were priced at $500 plus per kilowatt hour. So if you have a $30,000 car with a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, that's 50, that's $500 a kilowatt hour. And if you do a terawatt hour of batteries, now all of a sudden you have this huge volume of revenue. I think that's $500 billion in revenue. So what we see is it's still true with the cars mostly that they are priced at more than $500 a kilowatt hour or close to that. Megapack, though, is a huge volume product, and it is now down around $250 a kilowatt hour. So that kind of trashes that aspect of the model. But one of the big things that happened in the earnings call was Elon said, we're about to ramp to 100 gigawatt hours of, of Megapacks. And down the road, not too far down the road, we see multiple terawatt hours per year. If you just do one terawatt hour a year of Megapack, at $200 a kilowatt hour, which is less than what they're currently selling them for, that's $200 billion in revenue, which is double Tesla's revenue last year. So if you just add that to the existing business, you've tripled the Tesla's revenue and you're doing a 30% gross margin. Yeah. So that's a very promising sign for the business. And of course, everything else is going to grow. The robo taxi model, um, we are now looking at robo taxis. We, we, one of the biggest takeaways from the earnings call was they're already operating a robo taxi business for employees in the Bay Area with a safety driver. Um, and they have their own software already operating. They already basically have a competitor to Uber and Lyft mm -hmm. already running in the Bay Area of California for employees only. So sometime next year, probably the second half of next year, we're going to see a robo taxi network operating in, in Texas and probably in California and maybe in some other states. And that is the moment when the robo taxi network goes live that it's really hard for any investor to not price that in and once you figure out okay this is how many robo taxis they have now this is their cost this is the revenue you start to price that out in the future that's where you see 500 billion dollars a year in gross profit per year which is 25x gross profit last year and now you're talking about Tesla's, the next Tesla, <laughs> the stock 10 is 20x's so was on was the 20 the cents to the 20 cents to 40 cents per mile, is that right in line with what you were expecting? So the 20 cents a mile is a little pessimistic because at Autonomy mm. Day back in 2018 or 19, Elon said that the cost of the Model 3 was 18 cents a mile. So it's not clear whether he meant 20 cents a mile total miles or 20 cents a mile paid miles. Mm. Um, I think maybe he meant 20 cents per paid mile and yeah. maybe half the miles are paid and that would still work. Um, but the big issue is, the price of a ride in per mile basis eventually will get to 40 cents a mile. But in the short to medium term, you can't price it too low because demand would be too high and people would be waiting too long. Yeah. So if yeah. Uber is selling at 250 a mile and you go to $2 a mile, mm -hmm. you take all of Uber's business. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have enough cars to take all of Uber's business. You can't undercut Uber too much right away. Mm -hmm. You have to 
wait until you have enough vehicles to ramp your network so that you can lower the prices. So I expect the price of a robo taxi ride to be more than a dollar a mile for several years. And if it's a dollar a mile for the ride and it costs 20 cents a mile, that's 80 cents a mile in profit. If you do 100,000, if you do 50,000 miles a year of paid miles, 100,000 miles of total miles, you probably do better than 50% paid. But let's just use that simple guess. You're talking about forty thousand dollars a year in gross profit per car, and I think that that's conservative. <laughs> and you know, I think Elon said two million cyber cabs, maybe four million cyber cabs a year. Well, you get to twenty thirty, you start manufacturing in twenty twenty six, you've easily got a ten million vehicle fleet, yep. fifty thousand dollars a year in gross profit, four hundred five hundred billion dollars a year in gross profit total. It's like that's it's over. <laughs> and and you know, you just but the the thing that people are waiting for is well, when is the stock going to capture this? When is the mm. stock going to realize this? And it's yeah. I have this, I haven't, I don't think I've said this in a video yet. I was thinking about this idea in a video. So I'm going to share it with you first and you tell me what you think. There's, I'm going to simplify to say there's three groups of investors. Yeah. There's nerds like us. Yeah. We're already, we already get it. We already see like this stock is worth $5,000 a share today. So we're, we're, we're in, we're holding. There's a second group of investors who doesn't see it. And, and then there's a third group of investors who see it. But they're waiting for the other, the third group of, to, well, I think the third group of investors are going to see it. And that's when the stock, and they're waiting for that moment so they can buy cheap and get the rise quickly. And I think that's a foolish camp to be in, but they're, they're like you're outsmarting yourself if you're in that camp. But now imagine you're getting close to people getting it. Okay, so you're, let's say you're in Q1 of 2025 and you see, okay, they've started, they've gotten approval in Texas to operate the robo taxi fleet in Texas and, you know, Austin or something like that. And they've started test running the fleet. When is group three going to figure this out? Yeah. Okay. I think they're going to figure it out in Q2 or you know, they're going to figure it out in Q3. So I'm going to buy in Q2. Well, somebody else says, well, if they're going to start buying in Q2, then I should start buying now. Like within that second group, you start to have to start gaming. Well, if other people are going to start buying ahead, then I might want to buy before they start buying. And that can, that can recur, you can have a recursive thing where that just comes back to today. So it's sort of like, when do people start figuring it out that they're going to start figuring it out? And you, mm -hmm. it's sort of a weird loop, but once it's actually operating, which I'm probably talking Q3 or Q4 next year, right. we will yeah. actually see operations. It gets really hard for even the Gary Blacks and the, the, the Ross Gerbers and whatever, the, the <laughs> yep. Adam Jonas is whatever to, to not see okay, well, here's the revenue per vehicle and here's the cost per vehicle and they're going to make two to four million cyber cabs a year yeah. where, you know, it's not hard to figure it out at that. So at some point you have to incorporate it in your model. Yep. Like it's, it's already in my fun. model. It's already in Stephen Mark Ryan's model. It's already in your model. Yep. Um, at some point it gets in their model yeah. and then they just, it's unavoidable. Yeah. So, so that's when the stock goes up. So we're, we're calling this the great repricing, right? When does the great repricing of the Tesla stock happen? I had this conversation with the Cyber Bowl friends yesterday, and they were still very conservative, saying 2026, and uh, you know, just being cautious about this whole thing. I was the one that said I agreed. I was going to stick my neck out. I'm going to say maybe 2025, and be precisely what you said, which is by next year they're going to have two states, maybe even more states by the end of next year, but actually paid robot taxi rides. And I actually disagree a little bit about when, when Tesla decides they're going to go into a city or let's say a state, they have plenty of cars that can put the Model 3s and Ys in addition to the robo taxis. So I think it's going to be, it's not going to be as hard as you're saying that they're going to have too many, not enough cars compared to Uber, for example. But I, I just, I think that it's important that when they come in, that they price it uh, significantly less uh, and it's a robo taxi and significantly less than Uber. So in order to do that, you have to come that. in with you have to come in with significant volume exactly for what you're saying. I'm going to push that, back and I'm not sure I'm right. I'm, I'm going to push back and I'm not sure I'm right. Tesla has sold 7 million cars worldwide. Right. They probably sold 2 million, 2 or 3 million in the United I States. Agree. Yep. Mm -hmm. And 10% of them have FSD. So you're talking about 200,000. Well, once you start once States, you start making money. You might 400,000 cars in the United States have FSD. You're going to have more than that. Once you, once people can realize they can do it. And, and how many of those cars are in Texas? You know, it's, it's, I think there's about 5 million yeah. Ubers in the United States. Remember what Elon said though, volume production of the robo taxi in 2026. So yeah, maybe yes. not 2025, but these are pilots. 
but uh, okay, so so but I was saying exactly what you are, right? Twenty twenty five, you have an actual model, this kind of cash flow. Even people like um, these other institutional analysts, they have to. The issue that we're facing today, and I've reviewed almost all of the institutional analysts. Many of them are now saying, I believe in autonomy, I believe in Elon Musk and Tesla, and they're going to get it done now. That part is, uh, is being overcome. The part is, I believe it, but it won't happen in their time frame. It's going to happen in 20, 2040. And even when they say 2040, they should still DCF it back down to today. There's still a value, but they don't. They still won't give it that value yet. So by 2025, they need to. And that's where the big money is. Uh, so... The problem is that, uh, so I like your logic with the different groups of people. It, when does the stock get repriced? It probably won't happen in 2025, but uh, that this is the trigger that could start it getting that way. If not just Elon, if Elon and Ashok and Lars are correct. Yeah. Because I, I always say it's it's one thing when Elon says the time frame. It's another right. thing when Lars and Ashok and, you know, the rest of the team are saying something. And, you know, they, they actually have a ride hailing network working in the Bay Area for employees. So if they are correct and we start seeing paid rides in Texas by the end of the year, what? how, how do you go with your 2040 story now? Exactly. I agree with you. I, I, like, I, what, I mean, I guess the thing is they can be wrong and nobody holds them accountable for being wrong. But... And I think the other thing is like, okay, you've got your fleet operating, but we don't really know how much it costs. If there's no if there's no human in the car, you know it costs less. You know, you know the cost of an electric vehicle is less. It starts to become blindingly obvious. I love that term. Um, yeah. So, but the thing is, even if it doesn't actually become, let's say, have a, a a revenue and cost line in the in the in the financials, right? If you figure, all right, the revenue and cost line will be in the financials of Q2 of 2026. Well, that middle group, like the third group, gets it when you see revenue and cost of goods sold. In the in the financials, right? So okay, they're going to get it in Q2 2026. Mm -hmm. So then, I'm going to buy in Q1 2026. So I'm ahead of it. But then I want to buy ahead of the guys who are buying in Q1 of 2026. So you're already in Q4 of 2025. Yeah, depends so on how big that group is. That, yeah, I don't know how that dynamic plays out. Yeah. I think the the telltale sign. The question I asked, uh, the, I'll ask you, is there's a telltale sign of whether or not it's actually going to happen in the time frame that Tesla is outlined today. And that is, they have said that they're going to make volume production of the robot taxi in 2026. In order for them to do that, they need to start, like we will see investment and movements in the factories for that production of those cars. You don't create two, two million cars per year unless you fully believe. And then you, if you, if it's even delayed a year and they already started, they would be, they're going to get caught with a lot of money sitting in idle, right? Until it's ready to go. Because these cars aren't usable. Unless, unless they well, put a steering wheel on it, which they might be able to do to save it. But uh, you know what I mean? The, yes, the first manufacturing line, I believe, is already in place in Giga Texas. Exactly. This, I think there's an interesting question. Elon said there would be multiple factories. So mm -hmm. there has to be one in China. That's what there I think, too. There absolutely has to be one in China. Mm -hmm. Probably Giga Mexico will be built out. Um, and, you know, they, supposedly the footprint is supposed to be small. And I don't know. Like, I didn't think Giga Mexico was that small. So I'm a little puzzled about Giga Mexico, but um, and the capex is supposed to be less. So you're not really putting that much at risk if your capex in a factory is less. So yeah, I, I think there's some interesting. And when he said two million run rate, did he mean 2026 two million run rate? Did, is it something the where they rate. think? Yeah. Is it something where they think that the the ramp is going to be quicker for some reason? Because they said something in an earnings call before that cyber cab is much easier to ramp than cyber truck. Yeah. I've got the actual words that he said, but yes, he did say that. It was this. like they were joking on the side. It wasn't even yeah. like part of it. The, they were just sort of casually commenting on that. Well, cyber cabs utilitarian. That's going to be much easier to ramp. Okay, that's interesting. So do they? Do they? I think like they probably already have the line in pretty close to ready to production form in Giga Texas now. I think so. And my yeah. guess is they already know what they they have to be making it in China. It has the to problem happen. with China, I asked that to Brian White. He said that they don't have space there. That he knows of. Yeah. That doesn't mean they don't have space somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, Brian doesn't know. And no. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, how we know they can build a factory really fast. And it's like they decided Q2 of 2025 
we're going to get a factory built in China. It's going to be a smaller factory because smaller footprint. They'll have the factory built in 10 months. I'm on your side. I do think that uh, I'm more and more confident that they'll, they've will they already got things moving forward at this point because they were very confident at the earnings call yesterday. Um, yes. So, okay, so that's great. And then, so yeah, earnings call. Like we haven't even talked about that yet. You, you That was a tectonic earnings call. What was it that really, anything there to surprise you? Anything there that uh, you're very excited about? Well, I was, first of all, I was very surprised by the, they're already operating a ride hailing network. That, right. I can't, I, and I'm su surprised more people aren't talking about it. Yeah. Like, how did we not know that? There's, you know, probably hundreds or thousands of employees and, or, you know, several hundred, if not more than a thousand employees in Tesla who are already using this. Yes. And that didn't leak out. It's impressive. Um, I think Megapack, um, Shanghai expected to start with a run rate of 20 gigawatt hours in Q1. Mm -hmm. Did I hear that right? And and 40 gigawatt mm -hmm. hours by the end of the year yep. and not long after 100 gigawatt Yeah, they gigawatt changed the hour. word. Uh, they changed the wording from last earnings call. It was that they were going to already uh, produce it and uh, it Megapacks in Shanghai by the first quarter. Then this time they said it's going to be shipped first quarter. They're ahead of schedule. Yeah. And then if you get to 100 gigawatt hours of Megapack, we're not even including Powerwall, right? Just 100 gigawatt hours of Megapack. It's about $250 kilowatt hour, $250,000 a megawatt hour, $250 million a gigawatt hour. You're talking about $25 billion in revenue with somewhere in the ballpark of 30% margins <laughs> for a company that last year had $100 billion in revenue. Yes. So that's a 25% growth in revenue and higher profit margin, Just on that's energy. pretty good. And then I think there's a question of like, you know, when Elon says we're gonna scale to multiple terawatt hours, well, they have to have a plan to deploy more mega factories. This is a little bit of a side note. This wasn't in the earnings call. There was some mention recently that they may have gotten approved for Cybertruck in Korea, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here, people don't know this, I'm in Thailand. Yeah. Thailand yeah. is the second largest market for pickups in the world. Right, you even say and that Indonesia, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. The, the the cyber truck is very expensive. The typical pickup truck in Thailand is a Ford Ranger size pickup, which is smaller than cyber truck, significantly smaller than the F one fifty, that sells for less, maybe twenty five thousand dollars. Typically, less than thirty thousand dollars for the, the the low end pickup truck. And there's some more expensive. There's, there's some fancy Ford Ranger upgraded ones that are you know forty or fifty thousand dollars. But if they said we're going to make a rear wheel drive cyber truck with a smaller FLFP battery pack for, mm. you know, $60,000 that would yeah. sell very well in Thailand, mm -hmm. but Thailand has a really high tariff, like 200%. They, there's no tariff on vehicles made in China, but I don't think they're going to make cyber truck in China. So could Tesla make a deal with the Thai government? Hey, we'll build a mega factory in Thailand. I don't think they're going to build a vehicle factory here. It, it could be a good place for a cyber cab factory. There, there is a lot of electric vehicle. BYD has a factory here. Um, other car companies make cars here. I could see a cyber cab factory working in Thailand. I'm not sure. But a mega factory, you're going to need a lot of mega factories. Why not? Pull, and, and there's a lot of solar in Thailand. Like we're 14 degrees north. There, there's, 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 I see a lot of solar. There's a lot of room for more solar. <clears throat> Megapack could make a big difference here in Thailand. So yeah. you do mega factories, a mega factory in Thailand, and you make that a deal with Thailand that you're going to let us get Cybertruck and other vehicles from the U.S. in with no tariff mm -hmm. in exchange for us building a mega factory here. That comes together pretty well. I love it. That's brilliant. I mean, I almost guarantee that they're going to be announcing more Megapack factories. Now that the Giga Shanghai is there, Lathrop is now, I think I heard that they are at 40 gigawatt hours, which means that they're yeah. at scale. And then it could even be big more than that. <laughs> There's a hint that they can actually produce more than 40 gigawatt hours, but yeah. Shanghai's yeah. on its way. So they're going to at least two more probably announced next year. Yes. Yeah. So that, that that's like, like, I think my biggest takeaway that's like hard to argue with is you can see a 25% increase in highly profitable revenue within a year. A year and a half. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty good. And that's just on Megapack. That's assuming no other growth anywhere else in the company. Mm -hmm. and, we, and Elon said 20 to 30 percent vehicle growth. So you're already like a 50 percent growth. I, I, you know, I don't, and then, yeah, I, I think that, but and is there any big takeaways? I think those are the big ones. Um, I'm yeah. just looking at my notes now. 
you know, Cyber Cab Volume Production 2026 was I I thought pilot production um, that they're going for for volume production in 2026 was was a little bit of a surprise. Yeah. yeah, huge. I mean, that's that's he said that a few times, right? That we're it's volume production, not that's yeah. so. This, this is my point. They they he has basically said we are going all in on Cyber Cab. Now it's possible that the plan B would be to put in a steering wheel if something yeah. doesn't work out. Cause that that's how this is nine. Oh, he wire. pretty much, he pretty much canceled that. And he, 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 he said, no. Yeah. yeah he canceled He's, that. There's no going to, not going to be a $25,000 car. We're going all in Robotaxi. But I guess if something happens, they could mass produce this and then put a steering wheel, like plan C, yeah, right? It, it sounded like that's a no. And then I just realized something. Berlin got approval for another 500,000 yes, vehicles a year. They did. Yeah. What else would they make there? Yeah. There's going to be, they're going to be making cyber cab in Berlin. They're, it's not yeah. like they're going to make some other variant of model Y or in the new model three there. That is where the cyber cab is going to be made in Europe. <clears throat> so you got 500,000 a year in Berlin. You got at least 500,000 a year in Texas, probably 500,000 a year in China and maybe 500,000 a year in Mexico. Problem solved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know about Mexico. We have to wait and see what happens in the, uh, in the election. Yeah. Um, and then what kind of rules, tariffs they'll, they'll try to do or not well, do. So it's hard to say. No, if I made cyber cab in Mexico, I would sell that in Latin America. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, there's, Latin American market is plenty big. Mm. And and it's, a, it's probably a really good vehicle for the Latin American market. Mm. So, but, you know, maybe, maybe the, you know, you're not going to have RoboTaxi approval in <clears throat> Argentina. Well, Argentina might be quick because Elon and Malay are buddies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, Mexico probably won't take that long to get approval. Um, so I could see it. I think Giga Mexico would be later, but it makes sense. And it doesn't have to, you don't have to use Giga Mexico to, to sell into the United States. You can use Giga Mexico okay. or sense. Latin America and maybe export to other countries. Um, okay. So I want to ask you about the vehicles, the more affordable vehicles, the, you know, I mean, there, there's, we've read all the sentences that they said and trying to break it down what they mean by that. Um, and, and, you know, I love talking to you about this because you know, we have had many conversations about Highland or what's going to come next. What What is your interpretation of what they're going to be producing in terms of more affordable vehicles plus, you know, new vehicle vehicles in general? So clearly so it's going to be the revised Model Y. That's that's happening. If you, if you look at the post that Tesla did with the, the, sorry, the post that Tesla did with the update, there's a specific language which I've seen them say before in the slide decks. Preparations for new vehicles remain underway, parentheses, including more affordable right. models. That's right. And and I'm a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And I parse that language Commas. and I say, <laughs> that means there are also less affordable models. Okay? Ah, okay. It's including more affordable models. Well, that means there's also less affordable models. And so I I have my theory and I, okay. put, I just did a live stream on my channel and I, I, I have... I have said part of this theory already, and I'm, I'm going to put my whole Please. theory together. Yeah. There will be a smaller Model Y, and there will be a larger Model Y. So if you, the Model Y is the best-selling car in the world. Right. So if you were going to build something on the same manufacturing line as the Model Y, well, make a smaller one, make a larger one. So, and let me give you numbers on this. Well, well the done. Model because they did Sorry. release a seven seater, but you're talking that's not what we're talking about here. Something more. They than don't a sell seven the seven seater, seater in Asia. They don't make the seven seater in China. They only make the seven seater in the Europe? U.S. What? They don't. They don't make. They don't sell it in Europe. They only sell the seven seater in the U.S. No, I thought it. I thought it was introduced in China. Seven seater model. What I, what I heard is they don't make it in China. Okay. The, the, but this the, is the, different the, than the seven seater, right? Well, what, my, what I'm forecasting is, first of all, let me, let me go with some numbers that make it a little easier to think about. Mm -hmm. The Model Y has 2,100 liters of cargo capacity. Mm -hmm. When you fold the second row down, you know, you get the car and you include, I think, the front, you get 2,100 liters of cargo capacity. For context, in Asia, a very popular EV is the BYD Atto 3. Mm -hmm. It is the most popular EV in Thailand. <clears throat> um, and it is... 1300 liters of cargo capacity. So it's a smaller SUV. It's still not bad. Darren Jung, the Singapore YouTuber, has a good video mm -hmm. reviewing the, the BYD Auto 3. Mm -hmm. uh, I just hung out with, with Darren today and yesterday. Um, he's in Bangkok right now. So that's 1300 liters. That's significantly smaller than a Model Y. So if Tesla said, let's make a Model Y that's just a little bigger than the Auto 3. So mm -hmm. we'll go from 2100 liters of cargo capacity 
to 1500. So you make it a little shorter, maybe make it a little narrower, maybe make a little um, lower height. Yeah. And you get it down to 1500 liters. So it's still bigger than the Auto 3, but it's significantly smaller than the existing Model Y and probably has a smaller battery pack. Um, that would sell in high volumes in Asia, that would sell in high volumes in Europe. It might not sell that well in the United States. I'm not sure about the United States, how well this, the very the significantly smaller SUVs sell in the United States. Now, you're just making it a little shorter. You're making it a little narrower. You're not making huge changes to the vehicle. Right. Go the other way. Mm -hmm. Take a Model Y, make it about one foot or 30 centimeters longer. Hmm. Maybe a little bit more, but I think in that ballpark. Now you have say instead of 2100 liters of cargo capacity maybe you have 2600 liters of cargo capacity right so it's significantly bigger cargo capacity a lot more useful model y is already a very useful suv for its interior space but now you've just given it a lot more and you put the third row in and you actually have leg room there you go because if you've seen the third row in the model y it's sort of like okay you can put a four-year-old back there yeah once you have somebody who's like 100 pounds it's like too small mm -hmm. so you could put a legit third row back there and it would be a lot more useful to a lot more people. And I think you could sell. <clears throat> so the the smaller model, why you go from forty thousand dollars to around thirty to thirty three thousand dollars, let's say. The larger model, why you're probably sixty thousand um, dollars. Now you're Osborning the Model X, but the Model X is already not selling. Yeah, it's already not selling. So yep. I think that the that makes an, sense. An extended Model Y made in China and the U.S. Yeah. and maybe probably not Europe, but maybe in Europe. Yeah. Um, would sell like 500,000 units a year globally once it's ramped. And I think the smaller Model Y probably wouldn't sell that much in the US just because I think Americans don't want small SUVs, but Europe and, and, and Asia, that would sell pretty well. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe you're doing at least another 500,000 units and maybe a million units there, right? Well, what were we going for? We were going to get to 3 million vehicles a year from less than 2 million vehicles a year. This could be the beginning of it. That's, That's this is brilliant. Now. Yeah. They said including more affordable models, plural. Yeah, yeah. Hold so on, hold on. So, so Model Y, you made two variants. I love the theory. Love it, love it, love it. First time I heard of it, I, I kind of like it a lot. Okay, then what about the Model 3, though? Revise Model 3 before you go into these more because affordable models. They said more affordable models, plural. Mm -hmm. I guess it could be a smaller Model 3. Yeah. Um, I, I struggle with that because sedans are not very popular. They're not in very high demand anywhere. So I, if it was up to me, I wouldn't do it. I would just make the smaller SUV version, but it may be that they can they have a Model 3 line. The Model 3 line is not being used to full capacity, so they make a smaller Model 3, mm -hmm. right? And they make it, you know, I, I think the big hurdle in Asia and probably Europe is width. Yeah. So could you make it, you know, five centimeters, two inches narrower? Could you make it six centimeters shorter? You know, six, uh, you know, five, five, six inches shorter, you know, 15 centimeters shorter. Um, how much cost do you get out of the vehicle when you do that? You do a smaller battery pack. And I think there's an important distinction here is that when you make the battery pack smaller, you, you're reducing the range. We don't like that in America because we like to road trip. But distances are shorter in Europe and distances are shorter in most of Asia. So, and, you know, as long as you have the supercharger network, you're good on road trips. But a lot of the use here is city car. That's why the BYD Auto 3 is so popular. It's not a very good road trip car, but it's a great city car. So if you're delivering a city car, that works. So I, I do think there's potential there. But I do think since they say more affordable models, there has to be another one. So maybe a small Model 3. And the thing with the smaller Model 3 is you're getting better, better aerodynamics than on a Model Y. So that might be better on, you know, longer drives. That's my best guess. But like if it was me, I probably would like I don't run Tesla. They know what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, maybe there's a dedicated Model 3 line that's underutilized, so you got to do something on the Model 3 line. So a smaller Model 3. My best guess. Yeah, these are all very good ideas. And it, most people were saying that they, they're they going to do a hatchback, like they'll just cut off the back, stick it in. I, I like what you're saying because um, what we saw in Mexico was they introduced a new trim of the Model 3 just in Mexico where they took uh, in cloth interiors. And that just that and removed the screen in the back, they cut out $3,000 US dollars off of that price. And what we heard him say yesterday, right, or yeah, at the earnings call was something like, we're shooting for $30,000 uh, with incentives. Under 30000 with incentives, yes. Oh, yeah. So, but then he said, we're not going to do the 25000 or compact car. So I think the compact car is this two-seater. They're not going to do that. This is, that's all going to be robo-taxis. 
and then they're going to take the Model 3 and, and the Model Ys and do various variations of them and just bring the price down another five grand if they can. And well, and know, also, if enough. you if the newer models incorporate 48 volt wiring mm. and the uh, steer by wire mm -hmm. and some of the unboxed, things, uh huh. If you're able to incorporate a few of those things, then maybe that brings cost down a little bit. Now that you're already doing 48 volt on Cybertruck, your cost yeah. of those that supply chain is that that part of the supply chain has been is being brought down, and you're actually lowering it by doing more volume. Mm -hmm. So and in fact, there's, there's so many people who think that there's a refresh Model Y coming. Well, okay, you don't just refresh the Model Y, you refresh the Model Y and you have a smaller and larger one. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, you probably, the, each one of them eats in a little bit, the smaller one and the larger one maybe cut into the, say, the Osborne, the, the existing oh. Model Y a bit. But if you go from 1500, li from 2100 liters to 1500 liters, mm -hmm. it's a much smaller vehicle. I don't think you're Osborning that that much. And if you do much larger, I don't, I don't think you're eating that much of Model Y's demand. You're really eating the demand for other cars that Model Y doesn't compete well with because they're like smaller it. or larger. Okay. These are good theories. I love it, Warren. This is, again, first time I heard it, and I think that they're very good theories. Um, so we do know that the revised Model Y is going to come out probably, you know, not this year, probably first quarter. We do now know that all these vehicles are supposed to come out. He says we're on track to the first half wait, of wait, next wait, wait. year. I, I have to stop you. Yeah. When did Tesla say there's going to be a revised Model Y? <laughs> Don't do this again, dude. Don't do James it again. James Cat said it. No, but James Cat said it in his. I responded to James Cat. James Elon Cat said it. Tweeted Tesla out will. saying yeah. we are not going to do the revised Model Y this year. Okay, because he didn't want the Osborning. So it's very clear it's happening. Come on. <laughs> the spy shots. It's happening in Q one. <laughs> He did say it's keyword. He said it's not in this year, so it's very likely it's already going to happen. And then there's, there's, we're now seeing the spy shots, by the way. So all these spy shots are coming out now. So that's right in line yeah. with what we know it's going to happen. And you're not going to do it on revised Model Three, not oh, doing the, revised here, Model Y. Here's the post. He says no Model Y refresh is coming out this year. Yeah. Um, I should note that Tesla continuously improves its car, so even a car that is six months newer will be a little yeah. better. But what did they say? What they said was the new models first half of next year. Yes. So if they're doing what I'm saying, yes, then they would probably do all three of them at the same time. Yeah, I like One that. One thing you got to recognize, they don't like shutting down a line. Mm -hmm. And if you shut down the line, you got to ramp fast with whatever you're doing. You have the best selling car in the world. Are you really going to shut down a line? No, but, but you do want to um, reuse everything that you put in model three in model Y as well. So once you made the change in model three, all, a lot of that's going to show up in the model Y 50% of parts were changed in the model three. So there is going to be a whole new revision for sure. I, I think, I do think that they will refresh the model Y and yeah. I, I will stand by my view that I'm not convinced that the refresh model three, like have sales of Model Three have sales of Model Three surpassed what they were before the refresh? But it, it wasn't. I don't think so. I don't think that it, it it's skyrocketed more than what they wanted to do. Yeah, but I think that their costs went down, and that's why you saw cost of goods fall for the Model Three at thirty one thousand dollars is because of what they did. So, yes, I mean they they probably got cost down. Um, you know, Model Model everybody was excited about Model S and Model X refresh, and their sales did not go up. Yeah, they're down dramatically. So, yeah. um. I, I'm not that optimistic about reef. I, I, I get that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I get that it's going to happen for lowering cost of goods sold and for improvements in certain ways. But, and he did <laughs> just to be clear. We don't know that a model Y refresh is happening in Q1. They've yeah. said that new models are, are first half. <laughs> so when they say first half, it sounds like Q2 to me. <laughs> Right? When they yes. say first half, doesn't that sound more like Q2 than Q1? Well, okay, I'll tell you, he did say that previous earnings call, he said, maybe even this year. Uh, okay, yeah, next, that's, first that's half next year. Way, now they said first half of next year. I'm telling you, I, I'm still hearing first quarter, but yes, first half I'm could back. be second quarter, which is fine, which is fine. No biggie if it's second quarter. Yeah. I love you. Warren, you're, <laughs> don't do it again, dude. Don't do it again. Called Juniper. There's no Juniper. <laughs> There's no Juniper. <laughs> Juniper's not real. <laughs> okay. Uh, My mother's not real. Juniper, so that's not real. Tesla's overall strategy is it over? Is it playing out as you had, or as you and all of us thought out, or is this just you know shocking all of us that this is um, 
whatever there's, you know, tell me what do you think their strategy is, by the way. Yeah. So if you go back a couple of years, I thought they would have increased vehicle volumes more. So that mm -hmm. surprised me a little bit. I think they, I did think they would have, let's say a van by now. I did think they would have, they, they I think it's overdue to replace model S and model X. Um, so mm -hmm. I do think there's some, it may be a, like, I, maybe I thought there would have been a smaller vehicle already. <clears throat> so I think their rollout of vehicles has changed. I think what happened there is they saw more clearly than we did that they needed to invest a crazy amount of money in AI, yeah, in, in AI hardware. And so the CapEx has been going into AI rather than factories. Um, so if you go back to what I thought the strategy was a couple of years ago, no, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, what's the strategy going forward with RoboTaxi? I think this is one of the things I'm confused about is if, if it was me, mm -hmm. they run the company, I don't run the company, they know better than I do. If it was me, I would manufacture cyber cabs and I would run my own fleet. I wouldn't yeah. sell cars to people. I agree. And Elon has, has been saying, he has said that in the past that they're not mm -hmm. going to sell cars to people. And now he's saying you'll be able to buy your own cyber cab. Mm -hmm. And like, you can't sell a cyber cab for $30,000 to someone if running it yourself makes you $500,000. It doesn't make any well, sense. The problem is the cash flow. The, mm -hmm. Even though with $33 billion, they could use some of that money to the eat. It, but you don't get your revenue for years. Uh, with a cyber cab oh, revenue model who's paying for no, that you build, you you build a cyber cab and you build a cyber cab and you put it in your own fleet you make your revenue back in half a year half a year you make that you make, you, yes it's fifty thousand dollars a year in gross profit you're you're you get making your, you get your cost down twenty five thousand half a year you're so you're saying 60, you're mm -hmm. doing sixty thousand miles a year paid miles let's say mm -hmm. at a dollar a mile that's sixty thousand dollars in revenue you're going to sell the car for thirty five thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars when you can get sixty thousand dollars revenue running it yourself, in in the you've made thirty thousand dollars in revenue in the first half of the year. If you sell it to somebody, you make that thirty thousand dollar or whatever the, the you you know the margin is. But then you also will get a share of the revenue of the robot taxi in okay. perpetuity, anyways. How much money do I have to give you as an owner of a Tesla in order to put your vehicle on the robot taxi fleet? What share of revenue do I have to give you? Yeah, um, What's your put, it, put it this way. I make nothing right now. So if I could make 10 cents a mile, 20 cents a mile, doesn't matter. I'm going to put it in because I'm going to make money versus not using well, it. So some people <clears> aren't. So if there's going to be some cost in running, you're, you're going to, you're going to have cost per mile. You're going to, you're going to be using electricity. You're going to yeah. have maintenance costs. <clears throat> right. Um, somebody's if you follow anybody who runs a tour vehicle. Somebody's yeah. going to trash your car. You're going to have cleaning expenses. You're going to have other hassles. Um, and then it's like, well, I want the car available for me. So you have to get some premium to put your car in the robo taxi network. So yeah. Mike, I, I think Elon has talked something about 70% to the owner, 30% right. to Tesla. Correct. Well, if they're giving 70% to the owner, then they're only getting 30% of the revenue from the vehicle as opposed to getting 100% of the revenue yeah. from the vehicle. I know. I, I did a show with CERN and I, it just the mm -hmm. it's ridiculously how much more money Tesla could make if they just own it. And so I agree with you. I was shocked when they he keeps saying that they're going to sell it to consumers. So, or, so politically, not consumers, but to anybody. Yeah. Politically, if you have 10 million customers who own vehicles in the robo taxi fleet, mm -hmm. and then it's not the government monopoly. starts threatening your company, mm -hmm. you have 10 million angry voters. Yeah. So there may be a political reason why you want to share that revenue with voters. Because every everybody who owns a vehicle in a robo taxi fleet is going to now have a vested interest in having that robo taxi network, you know, succeed. The, so the other I, thing too is that, that there might that be additional be there might be additional revenue, like uh, entertainment package could be like a lot more than we think, maybe equal to the you know per mile. I'm I'm not a believer in that. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's other angles like the way they built Cybercab with the back. It's got like kind of like a pickup truck rear. So I picture the equivalent of Uber Eats or Grab Food here in, in, in Asia. Um, and you put like a, an, a, an Optimus in the front and you pick up packages in the back and then you get to where you're going to deliver. And Optimus goes and picks up packages and puts them in the back. And then when he gets to the destination, he gets out and he picks up the package and delivers it. And, and the, the vehicle drives on. Maybe you have two Optimuses into to speed deliveries or whatever. I think that the certain deliveries, I think delivery is something like 40% of Uber's business, Grab, Uber Eats, and 50% of Grab's business, something in that ballpark, 40 to 50% of the business. So I think there's a huge, huge value in providing the equivalent of Uber Eats and Grab food. Um, I love with, it. And love that's that why idea. they built it like that pickup truck look. 
Yeah. The other reason I think, and I'm guessing here, totally guessing, I'm going to try to show a, uh, a cyber cab right now that they might've done the, the closed back. Do you think that maybe it's like unbox model that they could still insert a middle part to extend the car if they wanted to? To me to add more seats? Yes. I think the answer is no, but I don't hate the idea. Um, I think that you could make a, a version of the vehicle that has, I don't know that there's a lot of room in the back roof line to make room for somebody else. And I just don't yeah. think it's necessary. I think that this is mass scale vehicle um, that think about it. If, if 80, I think 90% of rides are one or two passengers. So you've covered yeah. that chunk. And then that Uber eats grab food business is another 40%. Like you're covering so much of the demand with this two seat yeah. and the, the rear storage area. Um, I think the other, my favorite idea is take the roof off the back and make it a mini pickup truck. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I'm not anymore thinking that this compact car can be extended, but uh, it is what, it's, it's it's purposely you, you have, designed for cost, yeah. low cost, and the lower the cost that can be that bigger scale of manufacturing, the lower cost I can make, that's where you can make so much more on the per mile charge. And then you, your cost is so low. He's, he also said that as well. Yeah, and Model 3 and Model Y already cover your, if you need more more seats, you already have Model 3 and Model Y. So you've got that covered. Okay. I think the I, future would, would be, you need, I think you need to make a smaller vehicle that's narrower and lighter so yeah. that you can lower, you can get to six or seven miles a kilowatt hour and you can get the cost down a little bit more. So you're amortizing less cost over, you know, more miles. I think there's, there's probably a future vehicle that'll be smaller than this. That's my guess. All right. I, I want to ask you about RoboTaxi versus bots. What's your, you know, thinking on the bots? Have you started giving that some more thought given the, the shocking demo that just well, dropped two weeks ago where, uh, you know, they just, they said, screw you, all the people who were at the event going, oh, it's teleoperated. Well, here's a demo showing you that actually we could have had this autonomous giving you drinks, giving you packages. I physically was there and I received a drink directly from the bot. It was teleoperated, but just that feeling where the bot handed me a drink and I grabbed it from him and they let go, it was teleoperated. But then you saw the next demo that they dropped a few days later, it, it was fully autonomous and people were walking up and it was giving you drinks and bags of chips. So it yeah, could have I done it autonomously. So I think that what do we mean by teleoperated? Is there a guy in a motion capture suit somewhere mm -hmm. who's doing the motions? I don't mm -hmm. think that's what it is. I think the bot is, it's able to walk autonomously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Go there, it's able to go there. It's probably able to perform the task of giving a drink. And maybe some guy is pressing the, you know, give him a drink button on the, on the app. Yeah, could have been. But it's it's not like a guy's got, you know, a, a sleeve on his arm to like do that. I don't think that's the, you know, what, what do we mean by teleoperated? But no, to, that, to that is what I think it is. Uh, if you they, think there's a guy in a motion capture suit? Yes. Yes. Really? Well, I mean, there's a person talking to you as well. And, you know, it's like there's all sorts of things, like, you know, give me a thumbs up or play rock, paper, scissors with me. I mean, you can't uh, press a button to say play, play rock, paper, scissors. I guess you could have, but it, you can just tell that it wasn't. You can tell that somebody was regardless it doesn't matter to me which other but you're right the walking part they press a button and it says walk and it automatically uh, autonomously walked uh, yeah. apparently can climb stairs and they probably can do what you're saying now is that's exactly what the, the the demo showed a guy walks up and he points his finger says give me a, a glass of you know the water and the bot just automatically does it because it already knows and it knows how to pick it and where to pick from so it could have done it yeah yeah could have been so, you're right so to your question, though, if you had asked me a question earlier, maybe it was before we went live, but you, you had this question. I think that RoboTaxi generates revenue first. Mm. I think that we're going to see RoboTaxi generating, from everything we've heard, sure. RoboTaxi will be generating revenue before the end of 2025. Mm -hmm. um, as I heard what they've said about Optimus, they will start manufacturing Optimus next year at low volume and for internal use only so it doesn't generate revenue. It may start lowering costs of goods sold to something that it's working on, but I have a feeling it'll take time to dial in Optimus to have a yeah. meaningful impact in that way. So um, I think we see meaningful revenue from RoboTaxi Network in, 20, in early 2026, first half, let's say, of 2026. Um, I think sometime in 2026, we will have a second generation Optimus 
-hmm. probably yeah mid to mid 2026 there will be a second like we're we're about to see first generation optimus they talked about the hand production level Mm -hmm. there's going to be a production optimus with that hand and some other you know innovations that will start being produced early next year if not already Mm -hmm. um you know, Elon, I think Elon said we had a prototype, and I thought he meant a prototype of the next generation bot, of the no, first first the generation hands. manufactured bot. Mm-hmm. We at least saw the hand. Um, so sometime at, let's say, first half of next year, they start manufacturing that first generation bot. Middle to late 2026, they start manufacturing second generation of the bot. And I think that's when they start selling to other customers. Yeah, agreed. But like warehouses, f- other company factories, you know, like, like there's, I would bet that Pepsi Frito-Lay is the first customer for Optimus. Given yeah. their success in working with Pepsi Frito-Lay on Semi, yeah. Pepsi Frito-Lay seems like a really strong candidate to be the first outside customer for Optimus. And we haven't seen Semi as a revenue line yet, even though they're selling them to Pepsi Frito-Lay. So we're not going to see Optimus as a revenue line until 2027 at the earliest. Yeah. But we're going to see RoboTaxi as a revenue line in early to mid 2026. That's my, my gut. I love it. I agree with you. Okay. Uh, I want to ask you about partnerships. Um, when, which could be bots, could be RoboTaxi or, uh, it could be FSD. Anything else? Yeah. Um, I, my prediction would be that BYD is the first to license FSD. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think BYD it's is quicker to adopt new technology than legacy auto. Um, BYD already is a working relationship with Tesla on battery packs. Um, there's a perception that BYD competes with Tesla. And of course it's true to some extent, but generally speaking, they don't, they mostly don't compete on the same products. Um, the BYD seal is very, very much like the model three. So that's the closest one I can think of, but mostly I don't think they compete head to head. Um, Tesla sort of like a premium brand and BYD is not a premium brand. So they don't really compete head to head in the same way. Um, but they just, you know, they're already partners. So that would make sense for um, BYD to not just agree to license FSD, but actually implement it. Um, I think maybe another Chinese automaker or two could adopt FSD. And like, you know, they, they're they going to adapt quicker. Mm-hmm. Like, the, you know, if Ford said, yes, we want FSD, it'd take them three years to actually have a car that can handle it and be ready to work. Um, and I'm not sure Ford will still be around. <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah. And I should mention, by the way, sorry, we, we were talking about this. The fact that Tesla has a working robo taxi app, yes, rideshare app, yes, in the Bay Area that will be operating sometime next year in Texas and California. And anyone who's in, I don't understand anyone holding stock in Uber. I, I, I agree with you. I, I, it was pretty clear. And by the way, Uber CEO was interviewed less than a week ago, and he said that. They're not talking to Tesla and they don't know what Tesla strategy is. We could be a competitor. We can be a partner. We're hoping to be a partner. They have to call us. <laughs> They're not going to call what? you. By the way, they spent so much time talking about the, the RoboTaxi app. And they said that there's all these things that the RoboTaxi app can do that are, yeah. you know, your app now can do now. And we're going to port it's part of the RoboTaxi. We've been thinking about this for years. This app that Tesla will have is like a thousand times better than what Uber has. It knows your car. It can monitor the service requirements. It knows exactly how far it is to go to a supercharger. It knows how many cars are going through that supercharger. Like Uber it knows what music you want to hear. You get in the car and it's playing the music that you were listening to the last time you were in your car. Yeah. The la- whatever car you were in last, the song starts up. Yeah. Like you, like you just got out, got out of the last car. I, I, I bought a new model three for my daughter in LA and I flew in and I've never used it. I just went in, used the app, you know what I mean? Just normal and automatic. I thought, I just like, this is my, this is my, like, honestly, just shocked me a little bit how instant it was that I was going, I didn't even have to put my name up there. I didn't have to set anything. It was like me. It was like my car. So it was just shocking. Did you have to set the seat position or did it know the seat position? Oh, good question. I don't remember. I feel like it knew it. That's a good question. I don't remember. I don't remember trying to set it. I, you know how you just have to change this, but yeah. uh, I just, I think it said everything, honestly. So I can't remember, but. So I, I think that, that, you know, Uber has $150 billion market cap and I see that going to zero fast. Yeah. And I, I will say people have said Tesla should buy Ubers. Like they're not going to spend $200 billion to buy Uber. But Lyft is trading at $5 billion market cap. Yeah. 
So you could buy Lyft for $7 billion and people say, well, they don't have anything we want. Well, if you, how many people have the Lyft app on their phone? Now, imagine you open up the Lyft app and you're looking for a ride and the first option is a, ro is a Tesla robo-taxi. How many customers did you gain access to? You know, 10 million, 50 million customers, just like that. And then I think they have useful data in the form of where do customers like to be picked up? Where do customers like to be dropped off? Where are the first rides of the day likely to be? Where's the last ride at the end of the day likely to end? Um, you know, what are sort of like optimal, you know, routes for our, for our cars? That There may be a lot of optimizations there that Tesla will be able to figure out over time, mm -hmm. but Lyft or Uber might have shortcuts to a lot of that that might. And, and if I'm correct, that once the robo-taxi network starts operating somewhere, then the math becomes obvious and the stocks of Lyft and Uber fall to near zero, mm -hmm. now you're picking one of them up for $2 billion. Exactly. Yep. Um, and I think, I think that's a no-brainer. Makes sense. I love it. Uh, Warren, again, I always enjoy talking to you because you come with, uh, uh, the only one was, <laughs> there is no Juniper. Okay. <laughs> that's I know you're having fun. That's not real. <laughs> that's not real. Juniper, so you'll stick to your guns. But I appreciate it because you did uh, share a number of ideas that uh, you know I haven't heard other people. It usually is the way with you, which is awesome. New variants of the Model Y. I'm not sure it's going to be two more variants. I think one. But yeah, makes sense. Makes a lot of sense what you're saying. So appreciate it. Um, how do you follow Warren? At, what is your tagline? WR4NYX, Warren yeah. Redlick on YouTube, and you t-shirts at ElonBits.com. Yeah, Tesla's the next Tesla. That's the one. Love it. Yeah. Thank you, Warren. Appreciate you. Thanks, Herbert. Bye-bye. Take care. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.